the Wednesday night showcase of Dire Bear Adventuring Company. We are here this week, graced by the lovely DM Atlas. And Jason and I are reprising our roles from our very first Curse of Strahd campaign in which we played together. Uh, also joining us are Valen and Matt. We would like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, DND Beyond, that is D, the letter N, D, Beyond, dot com, who has all of these wonderful resources that you can use. There's free ones, and then you can pay a small subscription and have access to everything else in DND Beyond. On top of that, if you're looking for something to do live and looking for a live experience, we would like to thank our sponsors, Station Retro and Lucky Dice Cafe. If you're looking for Captain Sack, who is our main DM here with Dire Bear Adventuring Company, he is currently at Station Retro tonight doing a long-form campaign. He will also be there in a couple weeks. He will be there on Saturdays uh, running something else. And he's usually found at on Fridays and Sundays at Lucky Dice Cafe. Again, this week he's going back and forth to go pick up kids from camp. So he won't be there this week, but next week. Next week. You pay attention for that. Um, and just a quick shout out to the other games that we have going on. Tomorrow night we will be running Curse of Strahd. Um, Atlas's camera has frozen. Um, <clears throat> so... Sorry. Tomorrow night will be Curse of Strahd, run by myself, uh, with V as one of my players. And then we will have our weekend break before we're back on Monday with the second to last episode of Foundations of Adelar. You are right, V. Atlas is also in Curse of Strahd. My dumbass forgot. I'm tired. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm doing my best. I'm just helping. Uh, Atlas also plays on Thursday in the Curse of Strahd campaign. Um, Monday night, second to last episode of Foundations of Adelar. Uh, that is at 7 Eastern till 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Tuesdays, we have Esper Genesis run by Jason, our very own Jason, which is a sci-fi module for, uh, 5th edition, correct? Right, well, it's a standalone game, but yeah, it's 5th edition. Uh, so if you're looking for a little sci-fi action, that's where you should head on over. 7 o'clock EST, same time as every other game that we have running with this organization. Um, but without further ado, Atlas, where do we leave off two weeks ago? So, uh, it has been two weeks, so forgive me if I get a few details wrong. I did try to write everything down. So, uh, last time... There was a bit of a kerfuffle as Rollin, Thorig, and I believe Quentra went to... Oh, was Aethlin? Yes, Aethlin helped. Okay, so Aethlin, uh, Quentra, and Thorig. Aethlin and Quentra went to rob uh, the place that had the journal, uh, and that was checking up on the amulet um, for Esme. Uh, after successfully completing their mission. Uh, they escaped, um, albeit there was a bit of commotion in the uh, group of it. Uh, both Thorig and Quintrell, I believe, both saw that uh, commotion. Um, and Aethlin escaped into the underground before fencing quite a bit of what he had stolen. Uh, however, he did keep the important things. Um, so... Uh, that happened, and the next day, um, Rollin went with Esme to retrieve the amulet, um, only to find out that, uh, breakfast, the, um, curator, let's say, of the shop, uh, was a former member of the syndicate under Aethlin, and, um, was not expecting to be robbed, nor was super happy about it, um, and ended up paying up way too much, uh, to take care of the damages that had been done. Um, she taught them about something known as traversal essence that she had gotten from her sister after her death and um, uh, kind of elucidated them on all that. Uh, Thorin got some fucking pastries, so that's dope. Um, Quintrell continued his search for information on transplanar travel uh, and spoke 
to, and th that's actually where they got most of the information was Contrell speaking nicely to breakfast, uh, whose actual name, I don't think we even covered this, is NIE Stay Lot. Um, uh, Quentra ended up at the end deciding to check up on the family of the young boy who was claimed to have been spirited away to another place. Um, his family made a lot of money off of the, uh, or rather a lot of publicity, a lot of fame off of the encounter. And the little boy has gone missing. Oh, prompting a lot of suspicion from local townsfolk. Um, so without further ado, we are going to quick check back into Quentra because that's where we left off last yet last time. Um, so Quentra, you are standing outside the house. Uh, you have tracked the scent of this. Um, I, sh I should say you've tracked the scent. I believe you were tracking specifically um, the scent of this this person that stole the books from Bell and you were able to find it um, leading to this house specifically under this window. And as you are standing there looking up at this window, uh, you hear someone say, uh, hey, what are you doing here? Um, as you turn to look at this person, uh, it is a, uh, he has cropped dark hair uh, and a goatee and large round rimmed glasses. Um, and he appears to be carrying uh, a few bags worth of a few bags worth of what? Sorry, of you groceries. cut out. Oh, groceries. Oh, sorry, groceries. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, uh, um, sorry about that. Uh, sorry, I was just, uh, how very Canadian of you. Uh, huh, sorry, uh, it just runs away. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> <laughs> no. Um, is this the uh, home where the young boy is lost? You're saying this out loud, or is this a question? S sort of mumbling a little to him, I guess. I'm okay. not good with people. Atlas, you got really quiet. Uh, yeah, that was intentional. Uh, like, am I still quiet, like, right now? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's not great. Uh, like, Almost hard to hear you quiet. Okay, maybe if I just nope. Uh is that any better? Actually that's a, a that bit. is better, yeah. Okay, I've got you turned well. up, so you're okay on my end, but sorry, that's yeah, that's still not great. Um okay, cool. Let me see maybe Or maybe I won't ask if this is where the house of the boy lives. Maybe I'll ask if he lives here. <coughs> Beep boop skidoop, anything? Is that better? Yes. yes. There we go. Awesome. Okay, dope. Um Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to distract you. You just were really quiet. Oh like... no, no, no! You're good. I'm glad you did. Um, so you ask if this is where he lives, the elf yes. guy. Yes. Okay. He uh looks at the house and then looks at you and nods a little bit. And um, I'm sorry. Do you have business here? Maybe. Um. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have come here alone. I'm not a talking person. Um, does he... <laughs> I'm more of a sniff and figure things out. Um, is he... Does he match the scent of the books or no? That was on the Not books? at all. Okay. Nope. It's a very different smell. Hmm. Okay. Um... At Quintra's just gonna awkwardly probably just walk away. Okay. And yeah, just like okay, and walk away, and he'll go back, and he'll find Aethlin or somebody else that has better people skills. Um, <laughs> I don't. Is this a character choice, or is this a V can't talk to people? Choice? No, V can't talk to people, but Quincher little, can't little talk to people. Column A, little column B. Yeah. Well, like it's he's not gonna. I'll just offer to help with his groceries. No, he probably won't give me the bags. He's probably more than capable I mean, on his own. You don't know anything about this man. You just met him. Yeah. All you know is that he lives here, and you're like assuming he probably knows this boy. Yep. Okay. At this point, I okay. think the boy 
has something definitely to do with what's been going on. Maybe. So, like, going to the fairy ponds or investigating this house would be good. And, um, well, this guy's has seen me now. So, <laughs> I'll, um, I think Quintrell or Aethlin would probably be better at uh, talking with this man who I was just awkwardly I was just awkwardly standing outside of his house staring at this house and now he's like this he's like, man's gonna hey, haunt um, me in my I sleep help you? do you live here uh yeah okay walks away yeah yeah you know yeah, like just, a normal person I'm just gonna live in the forest for the yeah, rest of my life listen <laughs> listen sure. my charisma is a solid nine. Oof. Oof. Um, Alright. This, this is a big okay. no. <laughs> Nobody. Maybe Aethlin. Okay, what's uh, what's Aethlin up to then? Yeah. Just... I mean, I... <sighs> so, has Rollin returned? Um, With yes. With Esme and the amulet? You guys had that fight because... You, yeah, you guys actually had that conversation. Oh, that's and... right, we had a fight. Yes, and, and then Aethlin actually um, put together a letter and had it delivered to uh, Anais um, that to stated that she his, had the protection yeah, to of one the one of his lieutenants, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yes. Quintrail showed up shirtless shortly thereafter. <laughs> Yes, you know, that's right. That's someone and I think I remember him going to bed. I think we all went to bed except Aitlin, who, okay. was, who was fighting to get that letter written. Yes, I believe you're right. Definitely. So Aitlin's okay. still up. All right. I Yeah, and actually, I don't... Like, as far as in the timeline, Quentra, would you have been following the scent at night, or would it have been, like, a daytime thing? I think you're muted. I am. Oh, yeah. You are more than correct. Um, I thought maybe you were just doing that thing sometimes where people will just like silently go. <laughs> so, anyways, um, no, that would be. Yep, that'd be me. Um, probably mo like a good chunk of the daytime because he doesn't want to awkwardly stalk around a place by himself at night, especially if there are going to be people around, depending on where it is. Yeah. No, definitely. Probably okay. into the evening whenever everyone starts bustling off. Okay, for sure. Um, so would this be like during the time where Rollin would have been, or like Rollin and Aethlin would have been fighting at the bar and stuff like that? So like you are out checking this house out? I okay. heard the fighting left. Okay, gotcha. You get back to the bar and when you return, um, Oh my god, guys. I am so sorry. You're good, Atlas. The <sighs> best. Mm. No problem. Woo! Uh, so, when you get back to the bar, Aethlin and Rollin have kind of wound down. Um, everyone has sort of gone off to their beds and whatnot. Um, you know, I mean, it's still fairly early evening, I would say, uh, at this point. So, you, Aethlin, are you up in your room writing this letter? Uh... I mean, I'm sitting in a corner of the bar writing a letter because okay. then I can just hand it off to an informant when I'm done. Okay. Uh, Quentra, then you can decide. Do you, like, walk up to him? What's... Um, yeah. Probably waits until uh, to sit down until Aethlin's looking up at him. Okay. Just sort of standing at the awkwardly at the end of the uh, table. It's like, Hmm. You don't have to wait for my permission to sit. Unless there's something about uh, your sit, kind boy, that you sit. haven't told me. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Um, Or that I didn't discover, you know, with my very brief interactions with them in Barovia. Let's not talk oh, about I... my kind. Yeah. That's... Yep, let's that's probably the best. <laughs> Does like sit in just like I uh tracked a scent that was on the books to this house and met a elf. Is that half elf? I remember elf. You look like an elf. 
looks like an elf. Mm -hmm. Um, tracked ascent to a house. Met an elf. Said he lived there. Does not match the scent. So didn't match the scent of the house, or didn't match the scent you were tracking. Tracking. Okay. Um. What scent were you tracking? One if you mentioned this before you left, by the way, because I think I saw you sneak back out, I did not hear it because I was too busy arguing with my husband. Probably didn't mention it. I probably just walked by. Didn't really sneak. Don't have any ulterior motives. That's what they all say. <laughs> I've I've heard those words. I don't have any ulterior motives a lot in my life. I mean, I'm getting paid. That you are. <laughs> so, was it Bell's scent or was it something else? Something else. It was a different scent, not Bell's. Probably the guy who stole it. Oh, really? <laughs> well, then. Sounds like perhaps we need to go pay this man a visit. Maybe waiting for the whole group would be best. Probably shouldn't just attack. Was just say <laughs> attack! I did not say I was going to attack anybody. I just said we were going to go pay somebody a visit. Yeah, that feels mighty aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. Would it make you feel better if I promise I won't pull a knife? <laughs> That sounds like a hard task for you, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. Character you don't know my story. <laughs> but you're right. It is a very difficult thing for me not to do, which is why if I say I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. Maybe still waiting for the rest so we can at least tell them where we've gone. Yeah, but that's what you have parchment and messengers for. Well, you seem to be working on a parchment already. Is that what it's for? Can I use that paper you're using? Yeah. <laughs> this this is an apology to the shopkeeper we stole from. That you stole from, but... <laughs> you were lookout. You are an accomplice, my dear. Oh, no. <laughs> Correction. You stole correction i didn't touch a thing um <laughs> i wouldn't try and play the semantics games with me <laughs> i'm just a tracker you aren't gonna win uh anyway regardless <clears throat> we should wait for the rest of the group oh fuck no we should should i go knock on the doors I now then? question because i don't know if i'm there or not i think i, I might be because okay. right after i gave um Esme, the pastry, and we talked briefly. I went back into the tavern. Okay. So, so am I hearing this conversation? Uh, that's a good question. Aethlin, do you, would you have waited for Thorig to be gone? Thorig, would you have stuck around? I mean, Aethlin is sitting by himself. And he's made it very clear he doesn't want anybody there while he's working. <laughs> Here I am, just butting in. Yeah, but see, I'm paying you. I'm not paying Thorig. True. I want whatever updates you're giving me because I'm paying you. You're so... not paying me? <laughs> Just that screenshot from Meet the Millers. You guys are getting paid. <laughs> you get paid? <laughs> I love that. I love that movie. Um, so yeah. Uh, so no, we... probably not. Okay, yeah. So, Thurg, you probably wouldn't be nearby. Um, that being said, where would you think that maybe Thurg would go if he wasn't around? Like, if he had decided to peace out? Well, I mean, let's be honest. This is Thorig we're talking about? Yeah. I'm at a nearby table. Okay. Just uh, chatting up some randoms. <laughs> All right. And telling stories and talking about, you know, how great uh, the Thunder God is. May his voice forever boom. 
this, that you're like talking to some like there's like a kobold and then like a couple of like um humans and then there's like an or like a half orc or something and like the half orc and one of the humans are kind of like half listening to you the the one human is like yeah 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 like humoring you and this kobold is so fucking into it he's like just sitting here like oh yeah yeah the fucking thunder god you can't tell if he's drunk or just a kobold it could really be either one um so either way i'm all about the captive audience so i i will uh keep him entertained all right a rousing conversation ensues um so if you want me to roll persuasion because these guys are totally buying my drinks uh all right go ahead Okay. Do it, do it for shits and giggles, gits and shiggles. I hope I neither of those were words that I shouldn't have said. I mean, shits and giggles is fine. I, I'm not too sure about the other two because they didn't even sound like English. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, my thing is <laughs> leaping, but it's not giving me anything. One sec. Oh, Christ. yeah this is oh yeah that's a yeah you fuck i'm sorry okay yeah now i see the role for some reason it wasn't popping up before so that's cool yeah that's a 20 fucking six uh you get the kobold's attention and eventually like this other human and a couple of like everyone at your table is now suddenly like oh yeah this is some good shit yeah you free drinks all night my man these guys are so into the, the, so into the thunder god they're like all over you could be that they're like just a little too buzzed but you're just you're rocking it man you're rocking it just having a good time with it excellent oh yeah all right quintrell are you like asleep what are you up to are you just uh if it's early in the evening yeah no, i'd just be up in the room uh either reading through bell's journal or meditating okay all right sounds good um Okay, Quentra and uh, Aethlin, what y'all doing? I mean, you were still conversing, correct? You were yeah. basically just trying to figure out whether you wanted to bring people with. Yeah, just trying okay. to uh... convince Aethlin not to just do this alone. Not make the mistake like we did at the shop, seeing as we just found out that this... Uh seeing as it's just a mistake that was made. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice little town. Fine. Fine. If you want to bring everybody else, go get them. We're wasting time. Uh, the longer Belle is missing, the more chance she's going to get hurt. That woman can't keep her mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong, Atlas. I know. That's like her entire character. <laughs> Doesn't shut up. Ever. Talked us into so much trouble while in Barovia, and then Woo! managed to somehow talk us out of this said trouble that they talked us into. Uh, but at least she can. <laughs> at least what? Oh no! At least I... she cleans them up. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh. Talking Sorry. into and out of trouble, which. It's no wonder her and Thorig get along really well. Yeah. It's already a, a friendship made in heaven. Yep. <laughs> well, if you're so worried, go get them. Okay. I have to finish this letter. Good good luck. Ugh. Um God, I need all the luck I can get. <laughs> <laughs> Should I offer to write it for him? No. <laughs> No, I get stabbed. I get stabbed. That would just insult him. I get stabbed. Note to self. Um. Uh, Quintra's gonna go find. She'll probably find Thorig first. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Well, I mean, I'm yeah. I'm at the next table, probably standing on the chair. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Now with a sea chanty at this point. 
So Quincy just turns around, found him. <laughs> just like uh, pointing like. The word doesn't do I blend very well. Yeah, I I can see that. I don't even know if I should bother him at this point. No, Quintra will go up beside Thorig and sort of just like shake the chair a little bit. Just... And then in the rough seas. Oh, hello, friend. We I hate to interrupt the I don't know what this is. Uh we may have a lead <laughs> to go on. Hold that thought, gentle folk. I will return a nod. Okay. A- Aethlin's o- he's over in the corner. He's there in the corner. Uh, and I can probably easily find Quintrell just by the quick follow of scent. Oh, there goes <laughs> Atlas. Oh, they're back. Yeah, I mean, I can... You completely cut out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can still hear you guys. Zoom is just being weird. Okay. Um, okay. Awesome. Do you guys have the gang get get uh, gang together? Are you on your way? How are you? What are you doing? Go get Quintrell from his room really quick, and then bring him back down. Just touch. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock. Hey, Quintrell! Just like I've constant, the book I'm reading. constant knocking until the door is opened. I've probably <laughs> done this to like four doors already because the scent is probably all down this hallway. <laughs> so you're like, if, like someone totally ran up. You smell wrong. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so I figured more. Oh, you smell like someone I was looking for. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Just, just a couple people. It's a lot of sense yeah. in a freaking. Yeah. He'll answer the door. He'll follow dog person back downstairs. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. You smell like someone I know is the weirdest chat up line ever. <laughs> Hello, is it me you're smelling for? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, um. All right. So are you headed over to the house? Yes, I will lead the way. Alright. Uh. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. What's the plan? Is our paragon of virtue gonna walk in? Or uh, (laughs) should I talk at this guy? I feel like talking at this guy would be good. I'm gonna, like, stand over here. I think I may have... I think I may have scared him. You think? Yeah, alright. I didn't come at him or anything. I was just... Staring at his house. Well, I'm about to get invited in. Um, so if anybody wants to come in with me, that would probably be good. How busy is the street? Uh, almost not busy at all. It's basically the residential district, so there's really nobody out. Uh, the houses are fairly packed together. Um, it's never been to like a. Your code is um <laughs> is the house we're looking at is it is it like a townhouse where the other houses are co- next to it are connected to it yes yeah it's like a townhouse uh it's fairly narrow um it's like in san francisco how the houses are kind of like i, I don't know if you've ever seen what they're like there like the ones on the coming on a full house yeah sure yeah okay. yeah um, that's about the extent, extent of my knowledge yeah um, the outside of the house is lit with um, what looks like lanterns of some kind. Um, it's it's a fairly. Uh, did you cut out on this again? Just a little at the end. Uh oh. I'm gonna go a few houses down. Use one of my abilities. Let's me climb walls. And I'm gonna get up on the roof and go over. We will make sure Atlas knows that when they get back. But well, I hope she can still hear us, even if it's true. Yeah, but it might be super robot Yeah. yeah. All right. But who wants to go in the front door with me? Faithlin wants to pretend to be a ranger. I could. Um... Oh, Faithlin doesn't need to pretend to be a ranger. He's got a better cover story than that. 
But yeah, Bumbrush is going to be waiting out here. Oh. Um, but no, Aethlin, Aethlin probably will go up to the front door with uh, Thorig. Sounds good to me. I was going to say, Atlas, you need to be back in yeah. uh, Discord can there, you, yeah. my dear. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay, dope. Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the technical difficulties continue. Um, okay, so yeah, it's it's a, like nicely lit home. There are lanterns on the outside, uh, and yeah. Yep. Just Turn. follow my lead. You'll get where I'm going with this really easy. I've used this trick many times, and it hardly ever backfires. Hardly. Uh, all right. I am perched Wait. on the roof of the end, watching the back in case they flee out the back. Yeah. And okay. I can go to either side if I hear, you know, if I hear the sounds of, of conflict. Okay. Quentra, just to be sure, this was the scent of the person who stole the books, correct? Not, the house was. The house was. The house. But the guy was not. Yes. The elf. Gotcha. Okay. Which is why I'm, now hear me out for a second. Might be weird. I'm gonna, Quintra's gonna take his bow off of his back and, like, the arrows and give them to Aethlin if Aethlin's not carrying a bow. Is Aethlin not? He's not. He's not, okay. Take the bow. There's a rapier on one hip and a dagger on the other. <laughs> Typical rogues. Um, I listen here. <laughs> take, take the bow. I can shift into my wolf form and act as if... You are a beast master, ranger. And I am just your friendly wolf partner. <laughs> okay. And it'll let me sniff a little bit. Well, then I would suggest you hurry up and shift. Ah! Fine. Okay. He'll get sniffy with it. Get sniffy Either with it. Your clothes shift with you. Uh, that's up to... Uh, I can't, I'm gonna they can. say yes. Well, no, actually, I'm sorry. I... I told you you could decide whether that was that's true or... yeah i'll they'll they'll shift with them the only thing that stays is a gold earring that will be on the uh, tip of his ear but uh mm -hmm. he's an all brown freaking he's he's big he's, he's like a... he's like 220 pounds he's a big boy uh Ooh, he's got some bits <laughs> hey who's a good popper yes you are oh the good popper yes oh the good popper Bite. Please, please don't do that. That is degrading as all hell. Hi. <laughs> a good puppy. It's a good puppy. I'm gonna. That is a person. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever met a really smart dog? You can't tell me those ain't people. No, I have never met a really smart dog. I don't like dogs. I'm a cat person. I'm a... Here we go. Hey, Act like you like me, cool okay? Too. Please. I say I'm a cat person as I Atlas want, has um, a cat in their lap. Yeah, it's kitty. Um, uh, Atlas, if you Atlas, if you can't do Zoom tonight, that's fine. I don't know why it's doing this. I'm not yep. even doing anything. It just keeps kicking yeah. you out. It's like, no, you need to go. <laughs> yeah, so. I'll fix it. It's fine. Uh, yeah, so Quentra is now big dog. He's... So I'll go up. And knock on the door. God damn it, cat. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, what are y'all doing? I knock on the door and just kind of wait for a response, I guess. Okay. Um. You see a light in the front of the house turn on. There are already some lights on. There's one on upstairs, and then there's one on. You can kind of see, uh, through like the front door and the hallway. There's one on. Um. You see one turn on. Uh, and there is a face, uh, at the door. There is a, like, a sliding, like, oh, and I cut out, didn't I? No, we're oh, still listening. listening. Oh, cool. Uh, no, sorry, it was just my Discord thing. It did the, like, voice disconnected, and I was like, yeah, oh, great. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's a face with the sliding maglock. Um, it, it appears to be a feminine face, and you hear a voice say, um, uh, what? What? Hello? What, who is it? Hi, my name is Thorig. 
I'm here to discuss the Thunder God and share beer. Might you like to partake? I'm. Uh, my persuasion roll was a 26. Okay. Now the tricky thing. <laughs> wow. Well. Let me show. Do you actually have beer with you, though? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's just holding I'm the beer that he got from beer. the from the bar. Like, I'm not fucking around oh, about that bar. Of little faith. <laughs> is, just is, is this the is this the elf that uh, Quintress saw before? Uh, no, not at all. In fact, it looks like a much. It's a rounder face. Um, okay. In a different voice. It has somewhat feminine features, from what you can tell. Okay. Uh, but what does the face smell like? <laughs> Uh, apples and rosemary. <laughs> so not the scent off the book, I'm guessing. That's nice, though. <laughs> apples and rosemary. Yes, no, it is not. Um, uh, yeah, so... Oh, Jesus, how do I reconcile? Um, okay, remember, yeah. Atlas, you can't nat 20. Like, you can't right. perfect a t- ability check. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do this based on a major character trait of this person. Um, Okay. Uh, The person closes the door, unlocks the maglock, and then reopens the door. Uh, Standing before you is what looks like a half-orc woman. Um, She's pretty tall. You would guess probably like six foot six or so. And... She's wearing a uh, long dress. She has her hair down. Um, and she is wiping her hands on an apron. Uh, she looks at you and your friends and says, uh, Well, we have a uh, patron here in this house, but I suppose i would never been one to turn down travelers. Um, uh, please, come in, uh, I suppose. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Uh, good. Uh, I, listen, uh, we do, we do already have a patron here, um, so I, I hope that's not the only reason that you came to spend some time. No, no, not at all. I'm, on my pilgrimage, it matters that I share drink and stories with people. Uh, uh, if you like drink, and you like stories? Here I am. She um smiles a little bit and she kind of nods and says, uh, "You know, it's it's been a while since I I really had a good had a good drink and a story. I I'm baking some pies at the moment, but um, if you'd like to take a seat in our front room, please uh, make yourself comfortable. You're a um, lovely lady, and you bake pies." This is my lucky night. Thank you very much. This is very kind of you. She uh, smiles a bit and sort of says, "I I am married, but I do appreciate the uh, I do appreciate the kindness." Uh, I'll lucky be... man. I will Just share beer with him too. I will see if he wants to come down from his study. Um, Alder, Alder, would you uh, would you come down? We have guests. Um, she disappears down the hallway. As you walk in, um, you see it is a well-furnished um, and very narrow home. Uh, there are pictures lining the walls. Um, the, off to your right is a small front room. Um, it faces the window that faces out to the outside. Uh, the curtains are drawn over the window. Um, and there appears to be bars on the inside of the window as well. Um, there is some nice, comfortable-looking furniture, fairly large couch. Um, there's a small fireplace with a fire burning in it. Um, all in all, it seems like a fairly nice, like, well, well-cared-for home. Um, there are small trinkets lining the walls, and you can see that near the end of the hallway, there is also a small shrine, um, likely to the deity that she mentioned before. Um, it's clean and well kept with little lace tablecloths everywhere and freshly picked flowers in a number of vases around the house. Uh, there are also picture frames um, containing what looks like family photos as well as the uh, children's drawings. Okay. So she heads back to the kitchen and um, 
you see a man heading down the stairs. Uh, do you guys take a seat in the front room? What do you... Yeah, I'll take a seat in the front room and warm my hands by the fire. Okay, cool. Um, What are all of the rest of you doing? Well, Aethlin will step in with Quintra at his heels. Okay. Sounds um, good. Just kind of like has the bow kind of at an awkward angle because he doesn't he doesn't do bows. But it's like sitting on his back. Kind of looks like it belongs there with the quiver of arrows against his lower back. Gotcha. Um And then he's just going to keep a hand on uh Quintra's head. <laughs> Just to kind of, like, appear like they're a bonded pair as ranger and beast. <laughs> okay. All right. I love this. I love, like... Oh, uh... I do have a favor to ask. Yes. Um, the dog, Quint, gets a little restless. Do you mind if he stretches his legs? Promise he won't break anything. Very um, well trained. Uh, y- yes, I, I would hope. Uh... That should be all right. If you would please make sure that he doesn't go up on the furniture. I I just just cleaned. He'll stay on the floor. Talk to him like you would just talk to a person. He's just that smart. I well, that's um that's nice. That's that's wonderful. I, uh, ma'am, he'll right. stay on the floor. Don't worry. I yes, thank you. I I appreciate it. Um. But yeah, as you guys are kind of in this foyer slash front room, um, you hear steps down the stairs. Uh, they're very narrow wooden stairs, so they're they're kind of those like narrow, very steep uh, type of stairs. Uh, you see a man duck under the landing as he comes down. Um, Quentra, you recognize this is the man you saw before. Um, he's a very gangly looking elven man with, again, like dark cropped hair and a small goatee, as well as round rim glasses. Um, he appears to be in somewhat casual clothing, uh, definitely not his outing clothing that you'd seen him in earlier today. Uh, just a loose shirt and pants um, and some small house slippers. Uh, he looks at all of you and kind of nods uh, and then turns and uh, calls, uh, Marie, uh, I'm sorry, would you introduce me to, I, I'm sorry, I'm probably being rude. I, uh, Alder Hollock, uh, who do I have the pleasure of uh, acquainting myself with? My name is Aethlin, and this is my ha- wolf, Quintra. That's uh, pleasant to meet you. Um, I don't know if Marie told you, but if you could just keep him off the furniture. He'll stay on the floor. I uh, Thank you. I, I do appreciate it. We we just cleaned, uh, you understand. So she mentioned. Yes. Uh, well, excellent. Uh, very nice to meet you, Aethlin. And who's a good boy? Oh, yes, God. you are. Please yes, don't do this, to my wolf. I I apologize. I I always had a bit of a soft spot for dogs. Um. Uh, then the rest of you. Uh. I know he's so cute. Quintro will uh, wag yeah. his tail just Thoric. a little Thoric. just we're for show and we're traveling together but you keep doing that to my wolf and I'm gonna let him eat you <laughs> wag his tail is... more no I'm kidding <laughs> he is not this grumpy I assure you well won't be after this tankard of ale so do you have tankards I can pour you all glass oh um absolutely uh let me uh, marie i i'm sorry to keep bothering you my dear uh would you bring us tankards uh or some sort of glass if we have them and you hear her call back uh yes i'll clean a few for you uh he uh kind of nods and looks at you um thorig and says uh and who might you be thorig Storm caller, servant of the god of thunder, long may his voice boom. And is this your patron? I I point to the altar. He nods and 
smiles and says, I, uh, yes, we are quite devout um, in this house. We do try to practice and, uh, you know, uh, follow follow the teachings. Um, I, I would assume then that uh, you are not here to, uh, I suppose, uh, convert us, as the case may be? No, 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 no. Wrong priesthood. Uh, I'm here to share stories. Uh, frankly, learn. You could tell me about your god. Right now, your god is hosting mine. I am your guest. If anything, you can tell me all about this. I, well, I I do appreciate that. I mean, I suppose we can share stories of that. I, frankly, would be quite interested in hearing the stories of your travel. Um... If, if that is something uh, you would be amenable to. I'm sorry, one second. I apologize. I just need a second because something is going on. Okay. Yeah, so whenever you're ready. I mean, he's just going to tell stories to buy time. Okay, so sounds good. And I am sorry, time. I'm just trying to find something, and it is... Oh, my God. Oh, uh, uh, my brain. Okay. Um... Cool, 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 cool. I love this. Love this. Love this. Okay. Okay. Uh, spicy. Spicy. Okay. So we we Gucci. So you're just, like, talking, telling stories with this guy? Just going to tell stories to uh, buy time for our wolf to uh, sniff the house. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not jump on any couches. Yeah, they uh, they just cleaned them, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we've been told. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, just want to make sure you knew that. <laughs> um, yeah all right so uh quinter are you gonna go and sniff around is that what you're doing i mean are you mm. is that kind of your primary point of interest or what yes. what are y'all doing that'll be yeah that'll be what quinter is definitely wanting to do okay. he knows the scent is here he just needs to find it definitely um, yeah, and especially in your wolf form, it's more pronounced. It's, I mean, uh, do you remember Avatar The Last Airbender, the, like, sniffing thing? The, mm -hmm. Yeah, that thing and yep. how it could, like, see scents? Yes. I, I imagine it would be a little closer to that. Twilight Princess? Form. Yeah, also that. <laughs> I'm helping. Um, <laughs> thanks, I love you. Um, but yeah, so, uh, okay. So, Quentra, you kind of stalk off uh, the, the man who you has introduced himself as Alder Hollick. Um, and I can spell that in the chat, but... Uh... Um, that's their names. Uh, Alder Hollick, uh, he says, as you kind of stalk out of the room, um, he says to you, to Aethlin, he says, um, I, I do hope he's trained, uh, is I I would really rather not just have a uh, creature perhaps wandering around my my home. If it makes, e I mean, you've seen the size of him. He needs to stretch. He can't just sit for hours listening to Thorig talk. 
Um, I'll just walk around with him and make sure that if he has to do any business, as it were, I'll take him outside. I, yes, that's fine. Um, if I could just ask you to not go upstairs, um, it, more a privacy thing, really, than anything. I mean, you know, common courtesy, you're in someone else's home. Of course. I appreciate it. Thoric, he kind of goes back to talking to you. Um, he, uh, he says to you at one point, he says, you know, uh, since all of my wife and I have been through quite a bit, um, our family has suffered, uh, greatly as of late. Um, and we have been having, unfortunately, to sort of cut ourselves off from other people. Uh, so it truly is a bit of a balm on our souls to have visitors at this time. For as long as I am on this pilgrimage, I have come here multiple nights. Well, that is very kind of you. Um, you, you don't need to, but I do appreciate the sentiment. You need um, to do shopping for you? I could convince... I could find a fellow follower to aid you with that. Well, that is uh, very kind of you, but I should be all right. Um, I have the protection of my deity with me, and uh, so far the, the harassment has been minimal. Uh, so nothing to worry about there, though I appreciate it. Excellent. It's my pleasure. Quentra, um... The smell that you are getting, uh, you are able to follow it up the stairs. Um, you can you can really like sense that it is <laughs> a smelly smell, a smelly kind of smell. Um, but yeah, it is it is coming from like up the stairs. Uh, I mean, your your nose is also slightly hindered by the fact that there is a very prominent smell of baking pies. Yep. Um, they smell fucking good, bruh. Constantly gets distracted. Smells Ace the scent. Ace gonna wander it. into the kitchen, because I'm assuming that's where, uh... Marie. Marie yeah. is. Yep. Um. Yeah, uh, you go into the kitchen. It is extremely small. Um. Even smaller than the front room. Uh, it is a very cra cramped little area. Um. But you can see that there are tiny little um, sprites, uh, little, well, not sprites necessarily, but very little, like, almost fire spirits uh, that are kind of jumping around on the counters. They look like little balls of light. Um, and Marie is uh, humming to herself as she puts together these pies. Um, as you come in, she startles a little bit um, and says, oh, goodness, I'm sorry. Uh, did you have a question? Did you need something? I'm sorry. No, it's quite all right. I think I may have startled you more than anything else. I have to ask, um, is it just you and your husband here? Well, um, as of late, yes, unfortunately. Uh, our son, <laughs> Dixon, we've, well, she, um, looks a little ill uh, before sort of shaking it off and he went missing. I, I'm not sure if you've heard around town. It seems to be all that anyone wants to talk about nowadays. But we've been looking for him everywhere. My husband and I think it could be that he was spirited away like he was the first time, but we hope that it isn't permanent this time. Right. Would you mind, I, <clears throat> on top of being on a pilgrimage for Thorig, um, my wolf and I were attempting to hunt down any sort of leads. Your son's not the only one who's gone missing. Really? I, well, I'm sure people go missing all the time, but I, I feel as though this might be somewhat of a unique circumstance. I mean, it's not the first time it's happened. I, I understand, and what I mean is the, the person that I'm looking for has gone missing in the same way that your son has. 
Is that so? Yes, and my wolf and I are tracking them down. However, it would be very beneficial to us if you were to perhaps allow us into your son's room. Oh, um, I, well... It would, honestly, just be so that my wolf can get his scent so we can track him better. Go ahead and roll persuasion. You got it. Quintra will walk into the yeah. kitchen at this point as well. He's just like, there's too many smells to ignore. <laughs> <A woo. laughs> Quintrail up on the roof will be crawling around and sniffing at the upper story windows. All right. Like last session, he got the, you know, he got the scent as well. Yeah. Yes. I'll spend Which, a couple points to enhance my senses. Hilarious to me. I just um, picture you like sitting on the window, just like just like around it. Sorry. Very hairy Spider Man <laughs> sniffing at all the windows. What's going on? I remember you only He's get a huntsman one. spider. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh you're like sniffing around at the windows, and there is one window in particular that is extremely like the smell is strong. Um, Quentra, would you have like told them like what the house looks like or where you smelled what you smelled or anything? Uh, no, because I think I just mostly smelt it like on the house. I think it was yeah. the way you described it. I mean, there was a specific window that you smelled. Oh it on. yes, okay. No, I probably just would have like quickly said the house, not okay. even thinking. To be yeah. honest. Quintrell, there is a specific window that you actually smell this on, um, and it is potent. Like, it is right there. Uh, whoever had this smell was at this window for a cert for a pretty decent amount of time, at least. Um, go ahead and roll perception for me. Okay. Now, the keen senses that I've turned on give me advantage on perception checks. Yep, go ahead and use that. Let's see. Advantage and perception. <sighs> well, uh, glad you had that advantage. Either way, not great. But, um, okay, with that roll, you... So, you obviously, you smelled that whoever was here was here for quite a while. Um... What you can't smell is, like, whether or not they went in and where they came from. Can I open the window? Uh, you try, and it is locked from the inside. Is it like one of them typical little latches? Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks to be just a basic window latch. Let's see, where is that? I've got the equivalent of mage hand. Let's see. Well, and keep in mind, your friend Aethlin just rolled a 19 on persuasion to go into the room, so... I don't know that. That's true. Just out of curiosity, what is your charisma, Ryan? Or, um, Matt, sorry. Ah, uh, Mr. Hand. I could probably answer that for you. Me. The town allows you to open and unlock a door, pour a beer stein, and so on. 16? I would like to use my talent to unlock the latch. Okay. Uh, let's see here really quick. Sorry. Actually, where the fuck am I apologizing? Um, I don't need to do that. Uh, okay. So for your talent, what is that? Explain that to me. It basically functions like a mage, like mage hand. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, objects within 30 feet of me, up to 10 pounds. I can unlock doors and so forth. Okay. Um, all right. Sounds good then. You, yeah, you unlatch the window. You watch as it kind of like click uh, and the window is able to be opened. Stick my head inside. What do I see? Inside um, appears to be uh, a young boy's room. Um, 
there are uh, various like posters that have been put up from various like street shows and stuff that have come into town. Um, there appear to be some handmade toy cars uh, and um, right below the window. What's a oh, car? Oh, yeah, that's toy terrible. wagons. Toy wagons. <laughs> Fucking battle wagons. Um, battle wagons, yeah. Battle the wagon. newest craze. The newest craze. Um, so yeah, uh, the two, there is, fuck it, there's little toy horses. Um, <laughs> uh, little toy horses, they all appeared handmade. Um, there is a bed beneath the window. The covers are somewhat rumpled um, and look as though they have been recently uh, like messed up, so to speak. Um, I think a big whiff. Does it smell like there's been somebody in here recently? Uh, not particularly recently. Oh. Um, it smells like maybe... Give me a perception check again. You can do that advantage again. Quintra's in the kitchen. That's better. Quintra's in the kitchen with... Uh, Quintra's in the kitchen, I know. Sniffing Quintra's the edge of the tables. Alright. 19. Toy cars with a sign that says foreshadowing. Um, he didn't go to another dimension. He went to the future. Ooh. Uh, so yeah. Um, it does indeed smell like someone was in here within the last couple of weeks. Not recently. Recently, there is that bit of a musty smell to the room to indicate that nobody has even come in here in a while. Um, and uh. So you like yes, there was someone in here. It is definitely whoever that smell came from on the outside of the window. Um and however however it has been a couple of weeks. You can also smell another scent. Of... The smell on the bed. Yeah. Is it the scent from outside the window? It is primarily a different scent, but there is traces of the scent outside the window. Curious, sir. Curious, sir. I go sniff some of the toys. Does that, that scent match the second scent or the window scent? Uh, the second scent. Okay, so that's probably the boy. And something came through his window. And hung around his window for a while. You also recognize the scent of the window from Bell's journals. Because you were reading those. So Peter Pan stole Bell's journals and is now going around <laughs> snatching little boys. Hmm. <laughs> that's horrifying <laughs> so i've heard i've read some horrifying versions of peter pan I so bell is just wendy <laughs> that would be good yeah mistook her for a child because you know she's a half <laughs> she's tiny <laughs> she's teeny um yeah so that is what you kind of smell and sense in there um Going back to you, Aethlyn, you, uh, may, she is, seems hesitant, um, but finally she sighs and says, listen, I've, we've talked to the police, we've talked to, you know, various different spirit leaders. If you think you can help us, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm willing to do anything to see my son again. Um, follow me. Uh, and she takes you up the stairs, um, and there's basically it's you know there's not a large landing or anything it's about the size of the front hallway um and there appears to be a master bedroom above the front room a small bathroom off the master ba bedroom um with a door leading into the hallway and then another door um which leads to what you would assume is the child's bedroom as she goes and opens it up uh before she gets close to the door yeah uh, Aethlyn's just gonna kind of stop her and just be allow me um, you, my dear, currently smell like very delicious pies, and it may ruin any scent that's left in the room. She nods a little bit, um, laughs and says, yeah, we haven't opened this door, um, for anyone except for investigators, and it's been a few weeks since anyone's volunteered to, uh, assist us. So, um... Yeah, if if you'd like to go in, I'm sure the scent is beginning to fade, so I wouldn't want to muddle that with my own. I appreciate the understanding. 
So she we'll uh, she out in just a moment. You might want to let your husband know so that he doesn't come up here wielding a weapon at me. Oh, uh, yes, that would be bad. I, <laughs> to be entirely honest with you, he's not much of a fighter. Uh, truthfully, I I'm want to put your really a better disadvantage. I yes, that I'm sure you wouldn't. Um, she smiles a bit and kind of heads down the stairs. Uh, Thorik, she pops her head into the front room and says, Al Alder dear, um, the ranger, the nice ranger man, he's, uh, well, he's looking at Dixon's room, um, very briefly for us. He says he may be able to help. Alder kind of looks at her and gives her sort of a look and sighs and says, I don't know what he'll be able to do that we haven't been able to, but you know, if if he really thinks he can help. And she says, I know any little bit. Um, the pies will be out in just a moment. Uh, let me get you. Uh, is there any snacks or anything that you would want at the moment? I am so spoiled. Uh, whatever you may like to present. Uh, all right, then. Uh, but maybe I will make some dip or something. I don't... The fantasy equivalent of chip dip. Um, Look, if I can't have a fantasy world where I get to have tacos and dip, yeah. I don't want to be in this fantasy Listen, there's a whole story about tacos. <laughs> All right? Like, They're here. It's real. Yeah, that's a fucking mood. Um... I just learned in another game that there is a such thing as uh, French fries, so my character's about to discover fried potato spears. Fuck yeah! Hell yeah. <laughs> taco Taco, inventor of the taco. Um, Are true. Um, anyway, Aethlin is going to just gently nudge the door open. Okay. And let Quintra in before he shuts it behind him. Gently nudge the door open as Quintra tries to get through. It's like he's only fitting his head. No, I mean, he's going to open the door enough that Quintra can get through. Come on. What do you Thank take you. me for? <laughs> Fuck. A fool. No, V, I'm just going to try and make your fucking life absolutely the most difficult thing I could imagine. The biggest boy going in the <laughs> smallest crevice. It's fine. Firmly grasp it. Gently nudge it. Phrasing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you've been uh, giving head, but I feel like that's not how. <laughs> that is absolutely not, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, so I'm assuming that Quintra uh, gets the same smells, including the smell of Quintrell, who's still in the room. Yes. I was to say, is Quintrell yes. just in here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just wave. And then I point uh. to the bed, I point to the bed, I point to the toys, and I point to the window. <laughs> it's just like head. Yeah, Quintra, you smell exactly what Quintrell smelled, which is there okay. is a second scent, um, which you have kind of smelled all over the house. I mean, it's it sort of has blended in with the general scent of the house. Okay. Um, but here it is much more prominent. Um, and then there is that smell of the uh, book stealer on the edge of the window, as well as a little bit on the bed. Ed edge of the window and a little bit on the bed. Okay. Um. It's definitely, like, not here anymore. Like, it's just uh, faint yeah, enough no, that it's... it's it's gone back and forth. Yeah. No, okay. you can easily tell that this, whatever this is, is gone. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna take track on that. Okay. Just because this tracking skill is for more in, in and out, but I would say yeah. he'd just smell the scent and then go out the window to see if he can follow it, but I don't know if That'd I mean, you good... would probably have to, like, jump out the window if you wanted to follow it. Yeah. I will so. wait. And I will do that okay. another time. Okay. I'll start trying That's... to follow it while they do whatever in the house. <laughs> Are you serious? <clears throat> Are you actually doing that? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Oh, okay. I mean, if um, I track it to another house, I won't go in. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you... And, you know, you might want to... I don't know, do you talk to Quencher about this at all? Because it's clear... Uh, telepathically. Okay, so you tell him you're doing... Because it's quiet. Quencher you did like you followed this here from like the general scent of the books and you know already that it leads pretty much directly out of town okay 
Okay, this was one of the stops okay, that it okay. made before. That was, yeah, yeah, we did have that scent trail that went out of town. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, I can't so talk in this form, so can Quintrell hear? Telepathically, Quintrell? we can communicate. Okay. Yeah. And so, I don't know if, may, yeah, if maybe, like, Quencher would have even mentioned that beforehand or something, like if it's something that... I think we may have already been planning to follow it out, like, the next yeah, day. Yeah, but we right. uh, we got distracted trying to get the books. Yeah. We took it that happens. moment to get the books. Um, okay. Quintra yeah. will, uh, like, mention that he'll go with Quintrell really quickly. It got so quiet all of a sudden. My room just, like, went stellar quiet that's totally terrifying dead. um <laughs> and then uh he'll like go back over to the door and he'll nudge the door a bit that way Aethlin knows that he's coming out and not slamming the door into Aethlin okay. at all <laughs> just like gotcha. head butts through the door <laughs> okay um and then he'll go down to the stairs and oh Quinter can't talk to Aethlin in this form but he'll scratch at the uh, front door a little bit He won't whine. Uh, He'll just, like, paw at it, like, smack. At the front door? At the front door. He's gone down the stairs. This big, hunkering dog. Okay, Aethlin's not far behind him. Uh, closing the door, like the kid's door behind him. Okay, just leaving Quintrell in there. Uh, uh, yeah. Alright, bye, bye As Quintrell. Aethlin glances in, I've probably climbed out and I'm shutting the window and let. <laughs> <laughs> Quintrell is just this fucking enigma that no one knows what to do with him because like at no point stop trying and and that's the thing he used to ask every now and then but he never got yeah like yeah I'm telling you man like this and Curse of Strahd like the whole campaign I'm still wondering what the fuck is Quintrell (laughs) I've got racial abilities I've never used in front of y'all he's a spider man (laughs) that's all He's Spider Man. He's officially Spider Man. He's he's, he's told you what he is. Universe. He is the immortal. He is the uh, immortal student of the Nameless Master of the Mountain. I mean, what else do you need to know? Tell us shit. Or he's Spider Man. Or he's Spider Man. The Nameless Master of the Mountain is Peter B. Parker. <laughs> oh my God! Yes. Control B. Parker. Canon. <laughs> Did we just canonize that Quintrell is just all He's this realm Spider-Man? Spider-Man. <laughs> yes! So Except that I sprout wings sometimes, too. So, yeah. It's flying spider. Yeah, it's fine. There, I'm sure I there's bet a you that there is a wings. fucking Spider-Verse in which Spider-Man has wings. That's yeah. fine. We're good. If hey, we've I mean, got Peter you know. Porker, a Spider-Man has wings. <laughs> Every time a bell rings, a Spider-Man gets his wings! Exactly. Quintra <laughs> wants out the front door. <laughs> Release me. Uh, and is trying to just kind of like gesture for Quintra to just hold his horses for a second. He's gonna pop his head into the kitchen, look, uh, let Marie know, and thank her for her assistance in allowing us to get a fresh scent, uh, okay. and that. Quintra has picked something up and that we are going to go try and find her son. She perks up a little bit when you say that and nods um, and says, oh, um, thank you so much. I mean, uh, if if you find anything at all, um, if you would please let us know, that would, we would be so, so grateful. We'll do your best to bring your son back, ma'am. Thank That's you. That's what adventurers do. <laughs> Better than any so city I've guard, heard. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Better than dead ones, at least. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Aethlin's going to stick his head into the small front room. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thorig, we need to go. Now. Now. Is it going to say anything else? It just no. says that... Uh, okay. Here, let me leave this with you, and I I leave a a large wine skin full of beer. He uh kind of gives you a look. And, oh, you're leaving so soon? I uh, please, I I'm grateful that you were able to help us with all of this. Uh, is there anything we can uh, give you for your travels, sir? At this point, if my wolf loses the scent, we're gonna lose your son. So, we gotta go. No, we have to hurry. 
but we gotta get it out of here as quickly as possible. But if you have any baked goods ready, I'll go ahead and take it. Yes, um, uh, Marie, and Marie is already halfway down the hallway. She is sprinting. She has a basket full of pies. Uh, she hands them to you, Thorig, um, and nods a bit and says, I was baking these for a community bake sale, but um, I don't know if I'm quite ready to be out and about in the community anyway. Uh, these are for you uh, and your friends. Uh, please take care of them. They are made with a lot of love and the hope that we will see our son again. You are wonderful. Aislinn well, just gives her a you. sweeping bow and then leaves with Quentra <laughs> following behind on his on his heels. All right. Oh. Gotta go. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. The dwarf realizing the elf is just like almost full tilt running. Oh shit. Um, all right. Julio Julio. So I take it you guys are following the scent trail. Yep. Wolf take on right. Even so the scent trail leads out of town. You recognize that, yeah? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, um, we picked up Rollin. We're just gonna... Yeah, yeah. Put him you on. know, the, the AFK, Rollin is traveling with us yes. kind of deal. Exactly. Um, okay, yeah. So, well, as you guys... Behind, and it's hilarious when Jack gets on. <laughs> and it's like, hey, guys, you forgot me. And then Aethlin's just like, I'll send someone from the syndicate to babysit you. <laughs> um, okay, so you are headed south out of town. Um, for the sake of brevity, because I don't want it to drag on too long as far as, like, we're traveling to Palouse, because fucking shit, that's gonna be a lot of time. Um, I thought we were traveling south. Yes, you are. Uh, I, if, do you, well, okay, here, wait, one sec, I'm sorry. Because Loftwood is where we were at, right? Yes, 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 you were in Loftwood, so you're traveling south, and you guys can still see the map, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dope, dope, dope. So like south to the twin passes. Yes, to the twin pass. Um. Uh. So you head south towards the twins pass. Uh, the twins pass are two very large, well constructed steel bridges. Um, that uh lead into the mining and trade town of Break. Um, there's not like a whole lot that's super interesting. Um, but it does take you pretty much the better part of um all night. Um, and into the next day, I would say you get into Brick Lane at maybe like 11 the next day. Um, and you probably will have to rest if you want to avoid taking any points of exhaustion. Uh, <clears throat> Aethlin's gonna call for a rest. Okay. Okay. Because he's arrest he's, or arrest. Like <laughs> Aethlin's like, hey, somebody come arrest me. I'm a massive fucking criminal. No, no, no. Uh, he um I have stolen so much shit. Oh my god, I am suffering from a guilty conscience because I am a paragon of virtue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no no. He calls for he calls for arrest just so that yes. um because he does not want to fight with exhaustion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and he thinks it would probably be good for Quintra to get out of wolf form for a bit. Yeah, who in the world would want to walk into the dog all the time? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Girl? Yeah, so you guys take a rest uh, while you're here. Um, one sec. I do need to look at something. Um, to the north of Brick Lane is a small outpost uh, that appears to have been used in a long, uh, a long ago war of some kind. Um, the outpost itself is now used more or less as a training center um, and sits right on the river. Um, there are paths to the north to Belvedere, which in turn leads to Belus. Uh Belvedere itself is a fairly small, not very well trafficked logging town. Um, it is built through a section of the woods and um, is is fairly heavily wooded itself. Um, the actual town of Brick Lane, 
said, kind of a trading town. Um, a waypoint um, seems to be a very like vibrant, nice place, um, and is, I believe, the second largest uh, in this area. So, um, yeah, uh, there are a few places around here. Um, if you'd like, uh, there is a fairly well-known blacksmith, a trading post um, with goods from far off lands, and, uh, ow, ow, mother, I'm sorry. Um, I jammed my finger. Oh. Uh, a trading post uh, with things from far off lands, as well as um, a large famous stables, famous for their uh, various animals, horses, uh, creatures of all kinds. Uh, is there any way that I might be able to get in contact with any of my people? Yes. Okay. There is very I want to do that. Way. Okay. And if you'll give me a second, I actually... Mostly I just want to check to see if they've heard anything more while yes. he's been traveling. So, while you are in... Mm, one sec. Bum, bum. Uh, he probably has Rollin and the rest stay at the tavern or wherever they're staying for the night while well, he does this. Okay. With the exception of Quentra. He asks Quentra to come with him. Sounds good. So, you are in... Oh, I want to figure out how I'm going to play this. So, uh, as you um, enter town, uh, there is... Immediately, you can tell that there is some buzz about it just from your general sense of, you know, syndicate goings on and knowing that, like, certain people uh, are kind of a part of that world. Um, and that night, you're able to meet up with uh, Reaper, the male vampire that you employ in your employ. Um, okay. He, uh, I named him. Did I seriously name him? Oh my God, I did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Uh, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> Reaper is a male vampire. Um, he. <laughs> I have regrets. <laughs> Sounds like something a high schooler would name a, a vampire in their fan page. I know. I have regrets. Ooh. He, uh, you, um. <laughs> is he a sexy uh, vampire? Meet him in a dark alley. He, uh, he has a, like, a uh, scruffy brown goatee and like a side like side uh an undercut he's got a couple of scars on his face oh my god uh, and Bill, he clearly describing Reyes. he what definitely wants to get home to his husband uh he brought the werewolf <laughs> to a vampire meetup you, you mean his husband who is equally as grizzled and scarred oh yeah 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 his um husband the <laughs> ranger uh <laughs> <laughs> His name is definitely not Jack Morrison. Um, <laughs> um, oh my god. Okay, that wasn't intentional, but I'm really well, glad it's it too that late way. Anyway, now. Um, anyway, so Aethlin and Quentra meet so with you Reaper. meet up with Reaper, um, who actually does look like Reyes, because fuck it, it's my game. I get to pick yep. the no, movie. Um, well, <laughs> in my world too. So yeah, exactly. So um. Yeah. Yeah, so you meet up with Reaper. Um, while you are standing in this back alley, uh, he kind of gives you an update um, saying that they found a lot of activity around Palouse, which you kind of already have figured out just based Uh-oh. You cut out there. We lost Atlas. Oh, God. All right. Hello? Hello? Oh. Okay, I think you're back. Hello? Hello? Okay, yes, so there's been activity around Palouse, which you've already kind of figured out based on your own investigation. Um, but he does say that they sent scouts out into the Wavering Wood and that they were able to find activity of some kind of cult. They weren't able to get close enough or uh, in, they, they, you know, they had to keep a decently safe distance. Um, from what you can tell, there is some kind of like powerful magic going on um, okay. in this woodland cult. Um, <laughs> So Aethlin's other question is yes. whether or not we have anybody who's infiltrating the cult. You, so, as you ask that, Reaper gives a deep sigh and reaches into his knapsack and pulls out a letter. And he hands it to you and says, 
I don't know if I could call it an infiltration as much as it is. Well, uh, you'll find out for yourself um, here. And he hands you the letter um, and says, now I- Aethlin immediately hands it to Quintra and tells him to hold on for, to it for a second. Ow. Continue. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he says, uh, unfortunately, that is really all I have for you, but uh, I'd recommend giving that a look. Yeah. It, uh, well, it's more than what we started with. As Truly. always, Reaper, your services are appreciated. Absolutely. And now I have to get home. My husband's making spaghetti for dinner. God, your husband's spaghetti is always so good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. I, I have to say, I'm a fan. Has he learned how to use he's, spices? Uh, yes, he's up to uh, 76 different spices. Gods be praised. Seven. Yes. Stop it. Granted, not all of them are necessary, but, you know, he's trying. He's trying. Yeah. He gets points for trying. It's it's hard, uh, you know. He's from the he's from up north, you know. Little little less. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know. He's trying, oh. and that's all that matters. Exactly. Um, Reaper, it's always yes. good to see you. Be safe. And likewise, Aethlin. You take it easy. Stay safe out there. And then they just they clasp forearms. That's the that's that's the syndicate higher up thing. Is the oh. clasping of forearms. He does that, and then he turns into a bat and flies away. Yeah. Woo! Cool. And then Aethlin looks at Quintra. Can you read that, please? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have a really hard time reading. Reading something like that is going to take me an hour and a half. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not illiterate. I just have a problem reading. Could you please read the letter for me and tell me what it says? <laughs> okay. Quintra, I assume you open it up and read it? I'll read, yeah, he reads it out loud. Like, in a whisper, though. He doesn't have to summarize. Okay, yeah, it's not actually a long letter. Um, the letter itself, uh... I'm sorry, one sec. So, the letter itself actually... It's a very simple looking piece of paper. Um, and the, the header says, uh, Aethlin, comma, he believes he has been abandoned by God. He isn't wrong. Dash S. And that's it. He believes he's been abandoned by God. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Or he isn't wrong. I mean, not that it really matters. Uh, dash S. Dash S. As I quickly, like, look up through my own people that I've named. <laughs> You're like, shit, fuck. Who is S? I actually don't know who S is. All right. So yeah, he knows who I am. You've gotten that um, that letter. Uh, Aethlin does want to take like, even though he knows it's going to be um, difficult for him to read it, he does want to look it over. Yeah, because he's looking for any thieves. Can't go ahead and roll me insight. Oh God, hell yeah! Okay, all right. Reading over this letter, not only is the handwriting familiar, but you can tell that it is almost certainly the handwriting of somebody that you know, probably very closely. And as you think about it a little more, you realize that this is most likely the handwriting of your cousin, Salvatore. Son of a bitch. Okay. You handwriting in some time. Well, good to know he's still alive. You gotta remember to tell him to check in. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what are y'all doing um, at this we point? We should head back to the others. Um, okay. See what they've gotten for us. I do believe. Um, 
we have gotten oh, okay I know what that is um <clears throat> we'll rest here for the night and then move on we need to get a move on we're only at the outpost and uh we need to get to Palouse. Uh, Quintra, how well do you know the Wavering Wood? That's a good question. How well do I know the Wavering Wood? <laughs> you would probably be at least somewhat familiar with it. Like anything, it is just kind of like the woods. Yeah. And so usually you've been able to just sort of smell your way through it. Um, I do have Natural have Explorer as well. Time, yeah. yeah. No, the last woods oh, yeah. I was in was the Balik Woods with uh, okay. Bell. Yes. Okay, for sure. All right. Yeah, that's that's how well you know them. I think perhaps we should take a detour through the woods, see if we can't find this cult. We're following a scent, though. I know. But, I, I mean, I got information about the cult, and it has to do with the goings-on that are going on it. We have to go that way anyway. That's a lot of woods to cover, though. Yes, but, I mean, there's a chance we might run into them on our way to Palouse if we go through the woods. We run the chance of running into them. Yeah. Well, and from what Reaper told you, the actual, like, the cult itself is kind of on the outskirts of Palouse, like, right inside the Wavering Wood. Um, so you're, it's not far from Palouse anyway. You would actually have to kind of trek through the entire Wavering Wood just to get to, uh, the cult. Well, I mean, <clears throat> on, on that token as well, though, he's going to look mm -hmm. to, uh, Quentra. Yeah. What's faster? The trails or going through the woods? Quentra, you know from experience that usually the trails are faster. Now there's less cover, but they are quicker. The only thing I can do is lead us through the forest, even though that might still take some time. That all depends on how quickly you can move. I can move <laughs> through a forest like nothing. As long now, as I can keep sight of you, I won't be far behind. Now that's you. But we do have others. This is true. <laughs> and if there's one I thing I learned... I never thought about that. And oh, right. if, there's, if there's one thing I learned in Barovia, don't split the party. <laughs> There's at least two things you learn. You also learn don't drink strange out of strange bottles. Yeah. No, Aethlin didn't learn that. He's still drinking shit out of strange bottles. <laughs> and don't I dive out of windows. Like so that's at least three things. I oh, know. Well, I feel like don't dive out of windows. Do you not remember his entire introduction to Esme at the very beginning of this? He went out of his fucking bedroom window out of the second story of his house. That's a familiar window. That don't count. Okay. <laughs> that's not a stranger's window. It doesn't That's not matter. some strange window, exactly. Like breakfast's window. window. Do we not remember I went through her window for the shop and then crashed oh through God. the first floor window? Like. Honey, you're familiar. Like anyway, my I'm going to be right back. Okay, for sure. Um, I'll, I'll just sit here and sing Hosier. Um, so, uh. Cool, 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 cool. So, you guys are resting for the night. Is anyone doing anything while you're in break lane? Does anyone need anything? Does anyone want anything? Not really. Rest, meditate, eat, sleep. Yeah. Can oh. I pick up some just meat? Yeah. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Again, I'm yeah, not really curious. doing the whole money thing much. Yeah? Did Esme join us? Yes, she did. She is with you still. I know I haven't really mentioned her, but she is definitely there. Um, She is just kind of a, you know, Helper buddy, friend, character. Her and Ryland are busy talking. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm it. I'm uh, practicing my signing Gammon. And okay. having conversation with her then. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. You guys are uh, chatting it up and, you know, talking. She lets you know that she really appreciates that you've kind of taken the time to practice with her. Um, she seems very enthusiastic to teach you. Um, and at one point she mentions, um, at, for a while, um, Belle wanted to be a teacher, and so I think a part of me just really loves and appreciates, you know, being a teacher and, and having that instinct. Um, and and it reminds me of her when I when I think of you know being being that kind of person for someone. 
uh, because she has in many ways been that person for me. Um, you know, so she's helping you with that and kind of reminiscing and thinking about that. Um, and the two of you are doing good. So I think that kind of covers like what everyone is up to. Uh, so that being said, I assume you guys are moving on the next day. Uh, did you guys decide if you wanted to do the paths or the forest or what did you want? And Carol's letting that we stay on the paths. Okay. Bunch of authority. What That's... are y'all thinking? As much as I can help what? lead through the woods, it's still going to be more time to get to Palouse than the roads would be. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thorig, what are you? I'm right there with that, uh, that thought. I like roads. Okay. They're like um, currents. Not a boat. Land. I want to be on a road. <laughs> I'm a road kind of road kind of dude. All right. Uh, I mean, we can ask yep. Aethlin when he gets back. Uh, just Aethlin's gonna... outvoted. <laughs> Aethlin is outvoted. Um, okay. Uh, cool. So, yeah, you guys are headed up the path towards Belvedere. Um, so again, not a super long journey um, for the sake of expedience. You get to Belvedere. It is a very wooded town. Um, I would even say that that's only like half a day. You could actually probably make it to Belouse, uh by nightfall if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll push on in. Okay. Yeah. No, no stops necessary. Anybody? Nope. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, so you guys make it to Palouse. Uh, Palouse itself is a fairly bustling town. Um, it sits right at the foot of the mountains and right on the outside of the Wavering Wood. Um, so it is a very industrious kind of place. Uh, there seems to be a number of different buildings. Um, it is a kind of like layered town. It's sort of just uh, built on top of itself. Um, so, you know, that's like you have the, all these old buildings coupled with newer buildings, coupled with even newer buildings. Uh, and it seems that there's always some kind of project going on. Um, there are barkers for various different businesses uh, lining the streets. Um, it is a very upbeat kind of place. Um, but you can tell that when you enter that there is kind of a pall that has been cast over the town of Palouse. Um, so you're finally here. Yay. My, um, my scent buddies. You guys, the smell is stronger than it ever has been. It is to a point where both of you can tell that whatever was causing this scent was here very recently. Um, and actually, both of you, I should say, the secondary smell you guys were following, the smell of the boy, um, that is fainter, but the smell of whoever took him is uh actually quite strong like but both scents are present yes both are present as well as bell's scent you can sense that very faintly mm -hmm. so it seems more like a kidnapping than a spirited away sort of instance maybe well the thing that him and bell both have in common other than being short and childlike <laughs> is the fact that they both allegedly dimensionally traveled that's true. <laughs> Allegedly. We still don't know if Belle was actually in Barovia. No. <laughs> well, at least the boy is allegedly. It could have all been a bad trip. We could have all been drugged. That's true. You know, <laughs> acid is real and it fucked my mom. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys can spell that. Um, it's a very interesting theory you have about the kidnapping. Um, so, what are y'all doing now that you're in Palouse? Do we just want to look Following around? Following the scent. Okay. I also want to note that there was a um, there was a rumor that you guys heard about a ghost uh, in Palouse. Oh yeah. That was something that you had picked up. And you said so. there was there was something in the in the attitude of the people or the. Yes, there was. There seemed to be a strange pall kind of cast over everybody. I'll ask somebody about it. Okay. Uh, Everybody seems creeped out by something. What's going on? Uh, you corner Nine one charisma, of the yeah. street barkers. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and give me like a, uh, yeah, just like a street charisma, I guess. Street charisma check. Let's see. Do I click? Yeah, I click that. Okay. Oh, uh, I won't have advantage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're fine. 
Um, the person kind of uh, looks at you and they seem a little startled, um, but it is like a barker for a business. So, you know, they're already kind of putting themselves out there. Uh, they uh, shrug and just sort of look at you and say, listen, uh, there's just been a lot going on as of late. I mean, what with all the stuff going on in the woods and, you know, all the murders that have been happening, everybody's calling it a ghost. I don't know, I don't know what to think anymore. Where has this ghost been striking? Well, just about anywhere, actually. Um, mostly men, to be honest with you. But, you know, there's been a couple of women. Um, it's just uh, sort of all over the place. Mm-hmm. But only here. Only in Palouse. So, you know. And what's been going on in the woods? Well, no one's quite sure of that. Um anyone we've sent to go check it out hasn't quite come back so i think everybody's just a little spooked about that whole affair no one's sure if it's related though i mean there very well could be that like the ghost is living in the woods or so i mean if you believe in that sort of thing i believe well uh yeah then it's i I suppose most people think the ghost is in the woods Say, do you want a uh, free flyer for the meat market? It's uh, just down the street over here. Yes. Oh, We're having sure. a sale, thirty percent off. All right, fantastic. Uh, yeah, uh, great, greatest deals in the greatest deals in the area. Best meat. Um, just tell them, tell them Lenny sent you. Lenny, I'll remember that. Yeah. All right. Thank thanks. you, Lenny. Uh, you're welcome. It's no problem. All right, uh, I gotta, I gotta get back to uh, yelling at random strangers on the street. Uh, oh, gotta yes. make, gotta make my quota. All right, cool. <laughs> so yeah, you've obtained dun, da, 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 one meat market flyer. Yay! Let me put it in my inventory. <laughs> we say we were <laughs> sent by Lenny. Do we get an extra discount because we were sent by him specifically? I mean, you'll just have to go to the meat market and find out. It turns out that that meat market flyer is a super important thing and that it'll help you later in your quest somehow. It'll help me. You know, I actually believe that could be the case. This could be (laughs) incredibly important. So I'll look into this and take it upon myself to shoulder that responsibility for all uh, of you. Meat market flyers in my inventory. <laughs> along with along with Lenny sent me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. It unlocks a secret boss. Um, a man made of meat. <laughs> the meat man. Um yeah, okay. Um so you guys get the flyers for the meat market and you hear a little bit about the ghost. Um are y'all doing that? All right. We we traveled all day, just got here at night. So we'll need to rest tonight not to be exhausted. Yeah, because it is getting later uh, at this point. It's probably closer to the end of the day. Oh. All right, we probably need to get a room. I want to sell all the pies and put the money in a pouch that's separate from my money. Uh, Are you sure we wouldn't have eaten the pies on the journey? I would have eaten exactly one. So, okay, so you're putting the pie money in a separate pouch. That's fine. Now, what I want to ask is, is this for, like, are you doing, like, a story thing, or do you just want money? This is a story thing. He's Okay, yes. She wanted to go to the market and sell her pies. Oh. For the price of one pie, I basically did that for her. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's really sweet. Okay. So yeah, you get like fifty gold for all the pies. Um, they're they're a little on the stale side, but you manage to find some buyers. I mean, it's it's a pretty pretty bustling place. So. And I figure uh, I, I can talk people into it if necessary. Yeah. So that works. Okay. <laughs> hey, a, a true salesman. Um, exactly. Yeah. All um, right. Any chance the meat market is still open? The meat market is very much still open. Quintra wants to go there and see if he can 
buy anything. Get some meat. <laughs> yeah, they give you an extra 20% off discount because Lenny sent you. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Half price uh, meat. Lenny, Lenny now has a friend for life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come see you tomorrow, Lenny. <laughs> uh, all right. Cool. Glad that. Thanks for, thanks for your patronage. Appreciate it. Quint Trail is going to the biggest bar he can find. Okay. Or tavern. There is a um, tavern uh, in the center of town. Um, it's no. called. Oh, what the fuck is it called? No, we get our rooms wherever. But okay, sounds good. Um, there is one called the Bucking Blue, and it is a fairly large. It's actually two floors, um, and with like a balcony area. Um, that looks out down on the first floor. Uh, it is absolutely bustling. Uh, the bar is huge. There's two bartenders and um, people are everywhere. There's waitresses taking orders and putting down drinks. Um, there's music, like live music playing. Um, just a lot going on. Um, I spend a f- Quintrail spends a few hours drinking, but not too heavily. Okay. And Sounds telling good. stories about his trip to Barovia. All right. You know, um, specifying that it was this whole other place, and you know, if they're good. if they're kidnapping dimensional travelers, I'm putting it out there. <laughs> All right, sounds good. You uh, you are at, like conversing and talking about this, and you know, you, people are very interested, and some people are skeptical, but there are quite a few people who totally are into it and totally believe you, and are you know like getting into it, and they're like, wow, you know, um. Go ahead and roll me a perception here really quick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, probably. Oh, we lost the night. Uh-oh. What happened? We lost uh, the Okay. Roll 20. Uh, take me. Yeah, I guess it's just not a great day for a white wedding. Um, for perception. Uh, yeah, so you feel that someone is watching you but you don't when you look to try and see who it is you are pretty much unable to pick anyone out i mean it's it's a pretty big crowd okay um, there's a lot of people in here um but you and eventually get... i'll you know my storytelling will wind down and i'll go back to wherever we've got rooms okay sounds good um yeah you guys can actually get uh rooms probably uh at a nearby inn so one sec We lost you off Zoom, Matt. Are you still there? Uh, Maddie went somewhere, but yes. I don't remember. I, I am Maddie's still here. here. Um, okay. I'm just muting because my wife brought home food for me, and assuming that people don't want to watch me eat on camera. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. What are you eating? Unless there's demand for that kind of thing, you know, at which point I want a fair wage for my eating on camera. <gasps> Ain't none of us getting paid. Um, yeah, so, okay, cool. That is a very interesting idea. And you do get some traction, it sounds like, or at least someone is watching you, keeping an eye on you. Um, I go, I walk, I walk back like I'm not suspecting a thing. Like you're not suspecting a thing. All right. Julio, Julio. So, um, all right. Uh, what, Quintra? Uh, and Thorig, what are y'all up to? If I can, I would like to go to the edge of Wavering Woods and okay. see if there are any wolves, dire wolves, anything of the sorts among in okay. the trees. In the trees? Well, like in the forest, in the trees. In the forest. They climb trees now. <laughs> they just hang out up in the branches. They're very evolved um, wolves. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, they've they've evolved opposable thumbs. It's terrifying. It's horrible. Have you ever seen a wolf open a jar? Well, would you like to? Um, so, yes, you uh, pop yourself into the woods. Go ahead and give me a... Uh, give me a perception. Perception. That's persuasion. I don't know how to read. <laughs> it's all right. We've all been there. Um, all right, 15. Um, so yes, you actually kind of head into the edge of the woods, uh, and there does appear to be at least a couple wolves out tonight. Okay. Um, 
there you can tell that a little deeper in there seems to be you can smell it more than anything um a fairly not large but like three or four wolves where you would not expect them all to kind of be clumped together um and you can very distinctly smell something familiar you can't really tell over the smell of the wolves but there's something very familiar about that smell okay uh i have i have some of the meat with me and i'd like to whoever whoever comes up i'll give them some each of them some pieces of meat because it's fine it's just this is my brethren um and I have I have wolf empathy, so I can communicate with them. I just want to ask them okay. what's been going on in this forest. What have they seen? Okay. So there is... Obviously, I don't believe wolves are very intelligent creatures. Am I wrong? Let me... I just want to look that up really quick. Um, can't go wrong with thinking they're about as smart as big dogs. Yeah, they're they're a negative four int, so no, they're not very Oof. smart. Um but anyways, uh so the wolves when they communicate with you via wolf empathy, it's not necessarily so much as, you know, like that actual communication as it is like you can understand what they're feeling and trying to communicate to you. Yep. Um so you can tell that one of the wolves so you hand out this meat and it looks like a couple of wolves kind of come up. They seem tentative at first. Um, But, you know, when it comes down to it, you have this connection to them and they are just big dogs. Um, So one of them kind of lays down and is chewing away at this meat. uh, And, you know, you can just kind of hear like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, Whereas the other wolf takes the meat and um, you can kind of feel a sense of um, thank you, sorry, uh, as it like kind of darts off into the woods. Uh, The thank you, thank you, thank you, wolf sort of looks up at you as you're asking it like what's going on and uh it sort of communicates to you that there have been very strange people in the woods as of late um and that they've been kind of encroaching on the wolf's territory uh and they killed several members of a few different packs uh and that one of their one of the members of their pack is actually wounded um and that they think that the wolf that just escaped or the the one that like left with the meat uh, is going to bring that meat to their wounded pack member. Um, it then kind of cocks its head and looks at you and says, "Help, can help." Do you know what? Yeah. Uh, Quintra will go off like behind a tree, not to just do it like directly in front. Like he's done it before in front of other wolves that he knows better, but. <laughs> <laughs> He'll come back out as a big wolf. Yeah. I love this. He's like, shy. I don't really want to like change in front of you. Can you like turn, turn away? <laughs> Politeness. Okay. Don't yeah. Peek. Don't peek. Don't. Peek. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, shift into a wolf. Big um, wolf. Uh, one sec. Yes, so you, yeah, you shift into a wolf, and I take it you follow thank you, thank you to the pack. I love thank you. It's my, my new son. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you is now his name. Yep. And then there's there's thank you, thank you, and thank you, sorry. Okay. The Canadian wolf. <laughs> the Canadian yes, the Canadian wolf. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I take you, you said you follow thank you, thank you? Yes. Okay, so uh, you follow Thank You Thank You into the woods, and uh, as you get a little closer, it's easier to smell. Um, There's a small gathering of wolves, uh, and when you first kind of approach the clearing, a couple of them sort of raise their hackles at you. Uh, You're clearly a strange wolf, but when they see Thank You Thank You with you, they kind of are like, oh, okay. Um, There is a clear sense of distress from most of them, um, and one of the wolves is lying wounded against a tree, uh and appears to be unconscious at the moment and another wolf is sort of trying to tend to this wolf the best they can they're like looking at at their wounds okay um if i can approach i'm not like quintra's not approaching with ill will he's Mm -hmm. just sort of standing up straight approaching as slowly or as quickly as they'll let him yeah 
no um yeah i mean they seem totally at ease with you at this point i mean okay. you're clearly in the good with this member of their pack mm -hmm. um so uh you kind of approach uh as you get closer you can see that there appears to be the handle of some kind of like some kind of like glimmering like handle of some sort of sword or something and my cat find the found the twinkle ball um <laughs> i love this dumbass um so uh yeah you can clearly see that they're hi would you like to not um there's some kind of handle of a sword sticking out of this wolf's um side okay Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna have to be the tinkling in the background is so fucking That's, adorable. It's my fucking cat. You dumbass, it went over there. <laughs> no, over there. Over God fucking okay. <laughs> I knew she was dumb. I didn't realize she was that dumb. Says so the person that's speaking English to a cat. Listen, <laughs> listen, she understands. She does. She likes to pretend like she doesn't when it inconveniences her. But when I'm like, hey, it's food time, suddenly she speaks perfect fucking English. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm sorry. What did you say you were doing? Uh, um, uh, to pull the handle out, I feel like I might have to be a little bit um, more on the human side. Also, I don't know if I can cast magic in wolf form. That's a different thing oh, that altogether. That is a good question. I mean, um, I assume it would work like wild shape more or less. Well, or like yeah, can... wild shape. You can't cast on wild shape. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> Quintra, wolf to travel was faster, but he's gonna slowly shift back, kind of keeping his wolf head form for a little bit before shifting back fully into human. Okay. Um, uh, the wolves seem slightly worried, but they there seems to be kind of a general understanding that you are a safe person. Perfect. That's all I need. Um, I'll take out like the rest of the meat that I have, and I'll just like pass it along like the rest of the wolves, because this is why he got it. He got the meat for any wolves that were in this Aww. in this woods. Um, and <laughs> I'm the ultimate dad. And <laughs> he he kind of indicates that he to uh, is the wolf still passed out? The one that has the blade in it? Yes. Um, he indicates to the wolf that was taking care of it that he's gonna have to pull it out, and that they're gonna hurt, probably. But he, as he's pulling it out, he wants to cast cure wounds. Okay. Um, the wolf that is like trying to tend to the wounds actually kind of gets in front of you for a second. Um, but thank you, thank you, and the meat both tend to seem to kind of like help him retreat a bit. Um. And you lean over and you begin to pull out the sword. And the wolf that you are pulling the sword out of is going to lunge at you because it has just woken up from the pain. So go ahead and really quick, what is your AC? Uh, it is 16 right now. But he's okay. if it wants to bite into him, he's going to let it. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, you're going to take uh, two points of piercing damage That's from fine. the bite. I think it's piercing, right? If it's a bite. A bite should be. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, it's piercing. take those points. Yep. Um, and you are bitten into by this wolf as you pull the blade free. Go ahead and give me a strength check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That does it. Um, so you pull this blade free. Uh, it is clearly a rapier. Okay. Um, it looks to be part of a broken rapier. And um, as you pull it out, uh, it, it is clear that you have gotten all of it out. There is, it was not a full rapier when it went into this wolf. Um, and you cast Cure Wounds. And you, I'm just going to say, because even a minimal amount would be able to take care of it. So okay. you're, yeah, you, you managed to heal up the wolf somewhat. Um, you see a couple of the wolves run over and start kind of like licking at this wolf um, to try and like get it back up and see if it's okay and you know make sure. Uh, and you now are holding this rapier that is covered in blood. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. 
I'm going to see okay. if anybody in Palouse or even the party knows where this rapier could have come from in the long run. Go if ahead and give me a perception check. What do my peepers see? You smell very potently the smell of the wolf's blood, but around the hilt uh, is a multitude of somewhat dried blood. Um, and from that comes the very distinct and familiar smell of bell brush glass. Oh. And that's where we're calling it for tonight. Grr. <laughs> Actual anger boy. <laughs> <That's upset>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Julio, Julio. So, uh, Maddie, do you want to give us an outro? Sounds good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we are going to call it. Our poor DM has been working 50 hours in the last two weeks and is exhausted. Mm -hmm. So we wish them the best of sleep tonight. Um, we do want to thank Atlas for running this very short campaign for us. Um, next up will be Icons, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Run by Jason. Um, want to thank V, who's playing Quintra, Matt, who is playing Thorig, Jason, who is playing Quintrell, and of course our DM Atlas. And one last shout out to our sponsors at D and D Beyond, St uh, Station Retro, and Lucky Dice Cafe. If you have nothing to do tomorrow night, please come check us out on the stream as we venture into the village of Barovia. All of my players successfully made it out of the death house, and they burnt it to the ground on their way out, because oh. why the hell not? Cleansing power of flame. Oh god, I didn't authorize this. <laughs> uh, it's okay, it's I did. You weren't still in there. <laughs> it's okay, I authorized it. <laughs> um, Monday night, we'll be back with our second to last episode of Foundations of Adelar. Tuesday night will be another episode of Esper Genesis. And then next Wednesday, we'll be back. It'll with... be our last episode. Oh, boy. You hear it that, everybody? Well. Next week is the last episode for the missing bell. Will we find her? Who the fuck knows? But I really hope so. <laughs> yeah, I got some words for bell. <laughs> Maybe we at least found also her. has words for bell, and they're not going to be very nice. Um... <laughs> That being said, everybody, I hope you all had a wonderful night watching us play. We're sorry we're cutting it so short. Um, but IRL stuff does take precedence. So, with that in mind, um, we wish you all a good night. Be good to each other. And remember, roar for initiative.